All right. For more on what this all could mean for the markets, Eric Hirsch of private markets investment management firm Hamilton Lane joins us now. He is the firm's co-CEO. Eric, great to have you with us. Happy to be here. I, I know you're a private credit guy, but I want to ask you just your general take on the markets and the conversation that we have been having. What is your, your view of NVIDIA um, sort of stalling out and, and leaving some oxygen for the rest of the markets to, to breathe even more? Well, I think that's really the issue, Melissa, is that you have had the, the public market so dominated by such a small number of stocks that it's frankly causing what we see a lot of investors to sort of move away from the public markets and actually more towards the private markets where they're picking up a more balanced, diversified portfolio. And wondering just, you know, in terms of the markets, but also for your part of the world, private credits, um, you know, what what the rate environment, what do you see the rate environment being? And also, if Jamie Dimon is right and says, you know, as high as 8 percent in the next couple of years because of various inflationary uh, dynamics, what does that do? Well, I think we should break private credit into a couple of buckets. Mm -hmm. Part of what's happening and you're seeing the sort of the surge of private credit is really because of the demise of the regional bank. Think about being a classic entrepreneur with a privately owned business and think about where you're going to get access to capital. For a lot of them, it was the regional banks. And so that market has really been sort of superseded by the private credit managers. So you, we've seen a huge rise of private credit managers, a lot of expertise, a lot of talent and a lot of a lot of capital sort of sitting there. I think to Diamond's point on sort of rates, I think there's a today issue and a tomorrow issue. I think today. I don't think we're seeing any indication that rates are going to be soaring to 8%. But I think Diamond lays out a very cogent ar you know, argument in his, in his letter to say, if we see a bunch of factors line up, inflation, major geopolitical uh, disruption, continued overspending by governments, then yes, that's absolutely a possibility. If we see that, I think we will likely not. But if we do, you're going to see a real cool off of people wanting to borrow capital at that point. Hey, Eric, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. And, and first of all, private credit, no question, uh, has exploded higher in terms of uh, not only the size of the market, but also the availability of private credit for, for it, what have not been traditional uh, buyers of that credit. But using the same today, tomorrow dynamic in private credit, I mean, today we know credit spreads are at all time tights, effectively as tight uh, as they were even going back, all the way back to kind of pre global financial crisis dynamics. Um, Tomorrow, do you think they're going to be tighter than this? I mean, that, that's really the dynamic here. I, I understand there can always be problems in certain corners of the private credit world. We're always waiting for something to happen, happen in commercial real estate. Um, but I guess, you know, from a credit spread perspective, allocating a dollar tomorrow versus the market we have today, what's your outlook for credit spreads? Yeah, I think investors need to be careful. I think what you've seen is the rise of the private credit manager has happened so rapidly and frankly, a lot of that capital is coming from the retail investor, not the institutional investor. So as we've seen a real rise of these evergreen funds, I think people need to recognize that as those dollars come in, they need to immediately be deployed. And so what we see is a real gapping beginning to occur among the quality of credit being done by different managers, depending on how quick they are to deploy. So our view is you're going to continue to see capital flow in. I think that's going to continue to tighten up uh, the spreads. But again, I think we're going to start to see more gapping around performance of the private credit space. So given the, your 30,000 foot view, what should the Fed be doing this year? I mean, I, I think people are wishing for three rate cuts. I think be careful what you wish for. What's your sense as the path forward for the Federal Reserve? First of all, I think they're in a really tricky spot. I think you've seen some irrational behavior by the consumer, and that's beginning to finally ebb off as we've just seen sort of really, really strong spending. I think one of the things that we've kind of all underestimated is that rising rates have actually benefited the big spenders. So people who are kind of early retirees or higher income earners, largely living in a world where they've got fixed rate debt, if any debt at all, and they're benefiting from kind of their investment portfolio. So I think our view is we might see some rates coming, I think like cuts coming later in the year. I think the odds of us seeing three of those in rapid succession near term, I think, seems pretty low.